वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरी वन आई एम जैनब उनीसा अ कंप्यूटर साइंस स्टूडेंट फ्राम स्थानीय कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी फॉर वुमेन टूडे विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट रोबोटिक्स इट्स स्पेशलाइज एरिया इट्स एप्लीकेशन दैट इज द करंट एंड पोटेंशियल यूजर्स ऑफ रोबोटिक्स इन टू डेज वर्ल्ड लास्टली विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट करियर अपॉर्चुनिटीज एंड एस्पायरिंग इंजीनियरिंग स्टूडेंट कैन हैव इन द फील्ड ऑफ रोबोटिक्स नाउ रोबोटिक्स वैन यू योर द वर्ड रोबोटिक्स द वेरी फर्स्ट थिंग दैट स्ट्राइक यूर माइंड इज रोबोट्स ये रोबोटिक्स इज द फील्ड वेर वी डेवलप मेक मेनटेन मशीन विच वर्क लाइक ह्यूमन बींग्स नाउ रोबोटिक इज एन इंटर डिसिप्लिनरी फील्ड दैट इंटरग्रेट कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग द मेन गोल ऑफ रोबोटिक्स इज टू make or design machines that can assist and help human beings okay now robotics integrates fields of mechanical engineering information engineering mechatronics electronics electrical engineering bio bio engineering software engineering among others robotics develop machines for uh, different uh, uh, that are used in different situations and are used for many purposes and uh, many purposes mainly used for um, mainly used in environments that uh, that are hazardous to human beings okay the uh, hazardous environment we can say uh, det- uh, detecting the bomb detecting the radioactive material into the environment and diffusing a bomb and these are more efficiently done by uh, by machines rather than human beings now there are certain robots which use user interface which required user interface but there are many robots or machines which doesn't require any input they work autonomously they work without the use of user input now throughout the history it has been assumed by many scholars inventors engineers and technicians that one day we will be able to make the machines which replicate human actions which mimic human beings and that we can see today in 21st century now the robotics is a field which is growing rapidly and most sophisticatedly the compl- where we need great number of talents to put their talents into the field and make it most sophisticatedly and work accordingly to the needs of today's world now the as the complexity of robotics is growing we we can surprisingly determine uh, we can and uh, di- uh, we can differentiate and uh, we can which has spawned the robotic in five specialized areas the very first is operator interface operator interface can commonly said as uh, the the interface between user and the machine that is the robot user and the robot most most specifically i can say that it is the method which helps in giving the pre pre programmed command to machines which execute those commands secondly we have locomotion and mobility you can either say locomotion or mobility uh, for a machine to perform certain tasks to do certain work being uh, allotted to it it must be able to move that movements are known as locomotion in field of robotics and mobility can be achieved in many ways by uh, like certain robots achieve the mobility by mimicking human actions flying robots and drones make use of propellers in short the machine for what purpose we are designing the machine can often help the engineer to determine the uh, determine in designing the mobility now the next is manipulators and effectors for a machine to be worthwhile it must be able to interact within its environment it must be able to Uh, understand the environmental changes and at this time manipulators and effectors come into play which helps in understanding the environment okay we use the manipulators and effectors and the fourth we have is programming programming is an uh, essentially uh, uh, programming is essentially the language that is used by operators to communicate the machines that is they communicate the robots uh traditionally we used to do everything pre programmed now uh, the programming has been advanced here we use the uh, the robots or the machines use the uh, machine learn the environment and adapt the environmental changes and the fourth we have is sensors or perceptions sensors since uh, the robots make use of sensors to gather the information to gather uh, to know the environment ha uh, the the space it is occupying the obstacles it is facing and this information also helps in making the decisions so we must be able to uh, uh, allot these certain sensors for the 
correct use of the machine now uh, the machine uh, here in robotics we make use of artificial intelligence and machines are able to sense uh, sense the touch understand the uh, sense the temperature and also have the vision and uh, and these days machines are making uh, are also able to are also able to make small decisions and which can be improve in the future now applications robotics uh, design robots which are mostly used in military military industrial use agricultural use and uh, i uh, as i already said that is uh, used in the hazardous environment the and uh, these are used uh, these are also used in medical field so uh, there are certain surgeries which are being performed by robots these days now coming to career opportunities we have many career opportunities as the field of robotics is growing much more now the i can give you the five job opportunities being a robotic engineer can have uh, when we when we go into the field of robotics we have uh, we have got five op- job opportunities that is the very first is um robotics engineer a robotic engineer is a person that design the machine that design the robot uh, the that main uh, that that makes the robot the second we have is robotic technician this person this individual does the testing of the machine and the changes to be made is being done by this robotics technician the third we have is sales engineer though this person doesn't need to have the uh, enough information as he is not doing the technical work but he still need to be have uh, he still need to be knowledgeable and have the certain knowledge about the robots as he is the person selling the robots and he has to give the details of the uh, of the robot to the person to whom he is selling and the fourth job we have is software developer here the software developer is the person that develops the software in order to uh, that gives you some command in order for a machine to work properly so here the software developer does the programming part okay now the first fourth job we have for you is operator uh, though we design machine in uh, to we design machine that can do work more efficiently than human than human beings than we human being but still the machines has to be operated yes there are machines that work autonomously but still has to be operated and this operating work has been will be done by operator that is the uh, operator engineer we can say and as the field is growing you can see the more opportunities in uh, the field of robotics and there are certain non profit organization that are supporting the robotics now uh, i'll end up this by uh, by quoting the quote being quote by bill gates that is the robotics and other other that is the robotics and other combinations will make the world pretty fantastic compared to today so that is all about the robotics now we have seen what robotic is and uh, the applications the five specialized areas and the career opportunities we have so thank you hello everyone i am aishwarya from it sixtisen today i am going to talk about the topic trends in robotics and automation so before straightly jumping into the topic what are trends in robotics and automation i'll be explaining some topics related to robotics just giving the introduction about the robotics and automation okay now what is the difference between automation robotics and a robot so as we all know robotics is the field where robots are get designed they get constructed and how to operate a robot is decided whereas automation is a involves mecha- mechanical devices that can imitate the actions of people or animals simple automation tells how to imitate or the behavior using a mechanical device the robot is trained to uh, behave like a human or an animal so using this both the concepts automation and robotics a robot can perform complicated tasks and guided by automatic controls okay clear with this terms 
Now we'll see the first robot that was built in 1800 century. Okay, this was a picture of the first robot. This is the very basic robot which was built in the 1800 century. Uh, at the time, it was the starting era of the robotics. Okay, now in the next slide, what is artificial intelligence and how is it different from robotics as we know? Okay, we know the terms artificial intelligence and robotics, but what is the correct difference what is the clarity between the words so as we can see artificial intelligence gives the ability to a robot to select or to decide to perform to behave to, to get into some action to choose by itself like how humans use the brain to uh, decide what they want the same thing robots does using artificial intelligence whereas robotics is nothing but Programming the behavior of a robot. Okay, these two terms sound quite similar, but there is a difference. Now, coming to the major fields of robotics. Now, what are the major fields of robotics is when we try to build a robot, we concentrate on these fields. Operator interface, mobility or locomotion, manipulators and effectors. So, a robot has some movement. A robot must... Uh, has some interface to communicate like a human, to show the human behavior, to translate like a human, uh, to have the movement like human. So it must be able to sense the things, to, it must be able to identify the things and pick them up. So all these behaviors, all this comes under major fields of robotics. So now coming to the topic, how a robot can move. As we know, Humans, all humans have muscles in their body uh, through which we can have movement. Uh, we can raise a hand, uh, we can speak. So all the various things humans do. So how does this robot do? So in the same way humans have muscles, a robot also have a muscle wire. Okay, what does a muscle wire does means contracts when electricity is run through it. Okay, like our muscle contracts when we take a moment, these muscle wires act in the same way. They contract when the electricity runs through it. They also contain electroactive polymers. So this is a picture of electro, uh, sorry, muscle wire. And this is one example uh, of uh, how human is wrestling with the, uh, sorry, how robot is wrestling with the human. So in this way, a, a robot can have same movement like a human. And now, also to touch to have the sense like human robots have sensors to see like humans they have cameras to listen to speak they have microphones they have touch sensors gps sensors radars etc etc and even the interesting thing is they have infrared sensors to detect heat we are able to detect everything the cold the heat every feeling every emotion so in the same way uh, robots are automated with the devices such as sensors. Okay, now as we understood how they does, so these are few examples of uh, movement of the robots. So we have walking robots, flying robots, underwater robots. Okay, now walking robots walk through the road, flying robots fly in the air, but this is very much less often seen that robots can also go under the water. Okay, they Robots use it for recovery, mapping, exploration and cleanup. These are some examples of what a robot can do in the world. And few more examples like robots can climb too. Robots can climb and this is a robot gripper to hold something. Like we are seeing uh, the, now, nowadays, robots are used in factories to hold something and pick them up which is uh, very much heavier. So these are the examples of how the robots take a movement and how they does all the things same as humans. Okay, now coming to the generations of the robots, as I said in the previous slides, first robots was invented in 1800 century. And uh, this is one of the picture where a robot was designed in the puppet theater to perform a show. Okay, this is one of this was the first generation, uh, and uh, in the first generation, one more thing was designed a robot. It doesn't look like a robot, 
but it's a machine which was designed to perform a factory work where humans can't work where there is a danger where there is a hazardous places uh, where people can't go uh, robots used to do welding spray paint and lot more things they used to uh, lift heavy objects etc etc so this was the first generation of the robots and second generation is this okay now robot uh, slowly started to sim- stimulate many human functions not only uh, doing works in the factories they also slowly slowly in the second generation started to sim- stimulate many humans and uh, try to respond to the surroundings as simple as humans do in the second generation okay we can see a picture here and today robots have tremendously got a change they are doing everything as we can go through this picture they are doing welding painting assembly everything in the factory works jobs and in the field of medical robots uh, uh, in the field of uh, medicine in the field of um, hospitals they have done a lot of work and assisted the doctors with the surgery transported med- medicines what not a human can do everything they can even communicate they can even uh, dispense medicine they have the knowledge through artificial intelligence so these are the examples of few today robots um and uh, assisting uh, uh i i think few of the people know that uh, uh, robots have assisting the like waiters in the restaurants and uh, in many cleaning works like cleaning the shops cleaning uh, etc etc and uh, a robot can do everything uh, nowadays these are few examples uh okay after this now coming straight up to the main topic uh top 6 future trends in robotic automation okay the first trend is adoption of industrial internet of things as we know internet of things is a technology which has become quite popular these days so now what robots does in, with this technology is when we use iot when we use the iot these robots can increasingly deploy smart sensors at the edge of production to collect data previously inaccessible to the manufacturers so these can using iot technology these robots collect all the data and they give to the manufacturer so that the production and efficiency of the product can be increased so this is a very good thing a very um, interesting uh, future trend coming up Uh, the second one is in industrial cyber security as a priority as we know we humans can't easily identify the problems within the cyber security sector we can't have easily easy access to the internal systems so if robots are introduced in this field of cyber security they can easily uh, uh, jump, uh, jump into the systems so what the manufacturer will do is they will create more safe more uh, relevant websites and they'll identify more vulnerabilities so that a robot cannot enter the internal systems or leak some data or corrupt some data because robots have become more intelligent uh, more clever so this is one of the future trend and coming to the big data analysis so now we know big data analysis data data everywhere so this is the key now so humans have been analyzing data providing visualization what not everything so we we humans take some time to do few things like analysis calculations etc but if uh, if this information is given to a robot it can do more easily than a human it can do within uh, a few seconds like it's a piece of puzzle to a robot which can easily do anything so uh, in this big data analysis field also a robot will be proven as a very good uh, very good thing to be introduced so it will help a lot and it will uh, decrease the time of consumption to do all such things in the future now open automation architecture will be implemented now what is this open automation so as robots will come they will adopt everything they will be spreaded everything so no need of uh, human resources human source or uh, 
uh, labor source everywhere so now industrial industries will start uh, slowly adopting this uh, robots and that will much incre- uh, that will increase the product compatibility so this one this one is again related to industries so this one next one is very interesting virtual solutions will invade physical processes as we are seeing now everything has become online now so without the presence of the person we are able to see them so if in, uh, we introduce robotics into this if robots will do this virtual things how will it look so without the presence of the person robot will be able to show everything like if the per- person is in front of us it will be able to portray everything that uh, uh, everything that a human does like if i am here i am speaking to someone in the online mode but a robot will be able to show it in the offline in the recorded mode or anything we will feel like as if they are standing over here so even robots can do that give that virtual solutions and the last but not the least collaboration robots will continue to grow in popularity this is the main point <clears throat> in the future trends is that all the industries all the manufacturers will take robots in the future of course it will have few disadvantages but uh, they have some requirements where humans cannot perform everything so slowly slowly they are adapting uh, robots to work along with the uh, humans also so it will enhance their uh, product compatibility enhance their production and enhance their efficiency everything uh, this has not uh, this is still poised this is not still uh, being uh, done by industries but next it within a couple of years maybe uh, within 4 to 5 years we may see everything uh, uh, that has automation everything uh, related to robotics the robots will occupy everything uh, the human jobs too okay and um, last but not the least and then uh, i have provided 10 examples of robots helping uh humans uh, whether they are in med- medicine field or uh, shoppings or uh, whether i say factories whether restaurants everywhere here i can see a robot helping in the market to a customer so this can be a very good idea actually but uh, they may have few disadvantages and okay going through this quickly many supermarkets are turning to robots to fill their orders okay some grocery stores are adopting robot contactless so now uh, the corona pandemic has come covid 19 so everything has become contacts contactless uh, uh, so robots can help us in this terms so robots can easily supply chain difficulties by getting right items to the right stores uh, stocking shelves robot in retail help with the speeder shopping experience okay and um, okay these are the few examples where robot uh, this one is interesting robots are being used to disinfect hospitals and kill corona virus as we are humans we cannot perform everything we cannot go anywhere uh, we may not uh, be sustainable to do everything whereas in our place robots can replace us and can perform much better actions uh, can humans they uh, they also uh, uh enhance our capabilities but they are much more clever than humans i feel to conclude for humans in robotics it's clear one of the best things to come from the pandemic was the rapid acceleration in the development and importantly the adoption of robotics automation and ai okay so this was a conclusion and once referred to as the technologies of the future so robots tics was once uh uh termed as the future technologies but now we are seeing everything today these innovations have become cornerstone of today because of this pandemic it has come much more early to us much more faster and everyone is applying robotics everywhere and uh this this concludes everything thank you hello 
My name is Reshmika Dandarpu and I'm from CIC Department of Stanley College of Engineering and Technology from Med. Today I'm going to talk about robotics and automation in healthcare. Uh, the topics I would be covering today are uh, what is robotics and automation, examples and explanation, types of automation, introduction to RPA, that is robotic process automation, RPA in healthcare in areas of application, and a small survey. What is robotics and automation? Robotics and automation is a process of designing, creating, and using uh, robots to perform a certain task which could be done by humans. And Automation is a process of using machines, softwares, and technologies to perform tasks. These could be often confused as the same thing, but these are two different areas uh, which, which can be combined and applied across different fields such as healthcare, banking systems, etc. Now, for example, example of only robotics is robotic pets, or robots which greet people at the entry. And example for only automation is chatbots, mobile home automations, customer support, etc. Now, for examples of robotics using automation is manufacturing unit in industries like car assembly units or healthcare units and banking sectors. Now, coming to type of automations, there are two types of automations which are industrial automation and software automation. Now, what is industrial automation? Industrial automation is the process of automating the physical processing using actual robots and specific, specific control systems, which, uh, which again is an, exa an example relating to industrial automation is car assembly units and software automation. Software automation is mainly using softwares and uh, technologies like uh, AI or IoT to perform tasks which people do with computers and similar electronic devices. This particular topic extends into several branches based on various factors such as application or industry they are applied to, etc. Uh, for example, there, are test, there is test automation, robotic process automation and intelligent automation and so many more. In recent years, the most commonly used, type, used types of automations are intelligent automations and robotic process automations. Now, what is intelligent automation or intelligent process automation? IA generally combines RPA, that is robotic process automation and technologies like machine learning or uh, analytic and cognitive technologies like computer vision, national lang natural language processing, etc. It is basically the combination of RPA with something else to result and to result in different things. Now, coming to robotic process automation. What exactly is robotic process automation? Robotic process automation uses robots, bots uh, as software agents to interact with applications like a human would and uh, this is a foundation to a lot of major technologies like as mentioned IA or hyper automation or hypo automation etc. Robotic process automation is like a bridge between AI systems and the initiating systems without which there would be a lot of different connectors needed to be applied and which would make the process very much difficult to execute. Now, I particularly want to look at applications of RPA in healthcare. For example, uh, healthcare in, for example, RPA in patient scheduling. For the last four to five years, we observed that uh, people have used internet to schedule their appointments which is showing to be very efficient and easy, also error-free. There are no more overlappings between patient schedules and also a lot of less time is consumed to schedule appointments. Next point is claim management. 
Claim management refers to ensuring claiming process, which often used to involve a lot of third party involve uh, third party systems or people. And now this problem, the problem in this led to a lot of scams, a lot of distrust between the agent and the uh, consumer. Now automating it, which would not only remove these third party uh, involvement. but also reduce reduce time in evaluating the documents and data and again a lot of less scams would happen coming to data management in these times where data driven uh, decisions are being encouraged in healthcare systems data management has become very difficult doing manually hence why automating it would be a lot more error free and time efficient coming to surgical uses keyhole surgeries laser surgeries for cosmetic surgeries and long durational surgeries could use a lot of help from robotics keyhole surgeries is a surgery where the incision in on a patient is the size of keyhole and using robotics would uh, decrease a lot of error and time consumed uh, in the surgery a lot of diagnostic diagnosis tests using ecg eeg mri use rpa and also there is an example of uh, um, of a hospital in america which uses alexa or siri in patient's room to notify the doctors on the condition of uh, patients when needed now i conducted a small survey using google forms amongst people in and around medical field to great uh, to gain a wider perspective of usage and application of rpa in their field or in or basic technology in their field and i observed both positives and negatives a uh, majority of people accepted help from technologies but there were also ample amount of people who were skeptical about robots reducing employments and also robots lacking empathy while treating a patient when needed it was also said to be high maintenance economically unfavorable and also there was a lack of doctor there was a lack of doctors who were skilled to um, operate these advanced machinery now the conclusion is now coming to the conclusion uh, A study states that in the next five years, technology in health sciences would increase up to twice as it is now. So, as the needs of efficient healthcare provision is increasing, a helping hand from technology such as robotics, database management system, etc., could make it a better place in improving the quality of diagnosis and treatment. Therefore, more research and development in this this area would help the process. a little better thank you good morning everyone this is meghna from it department second year today i'm going to present on the topic trends in robotics and automation so this robo looks and acts like a human being it is a man made mechanical device which can move by themselves it these motions can be controlled sensed planned and modeled so this motion behavior can be influenced by program what is robotics it is a science of building an application of the robot now what is automation this automation is a process to create control and monitor the applications of the technology so are there any reasons for this automation yes to improve the worker safety to accomplish the process that cannot be done manually to reduce manufacturing delay time so what is rpa RPA is robotic process automation. It is a software technology that make it easy to build, deploy, and manage software robots. So just like we people, these software robots can read what is on the screen. They can navigate the system. They can identify and extract the data. They can perform a wide range of defined actions. These software robots can do it in a faster and more consistently than the people. without any breaks the advantages and disadvantages of robots are they work 24 by 7 they perform tasks faster than the humans they give information that humans can't get 
they go too far away from home disadvantages are people lose their jobs in the factories when they need supply of power the cost to make a robo or to buy a robo is much so it needs maintenance to keep it running now these robotics and automation can be implemented in various fields it can be implemented in the surgery field it can be implemented in the military field as well as agricultural field also so these indian farmers like they suffer from the poverty and most of them are illiterate so there is lack of good extension services like on time uh, electricity high cost for doing modern techniques and lack of human power so for them do we have any solution for them yes we have a solution for them it's with robotic technology so this robo is a energy saving and efficient as it contains solar plates we can see in a picture here it contains a solar plates on it it perform plucking sowing seeds and sprinkling it contains a wireless cameras where we can control it from some distance so the main part here is control we have to know the control architecture of this where things can be done now the farming and agricultural industries already have their own problems from last year because of the covid-19 pandemic hit us these problems became even more worse so the industries manufacturing and shipping plants could not maintain the social distance they can't take risk and risk about the people's life so they turned up to an automation as solution so the future of automation and robotics and agriculture can help the growing labor crisis they reduce the production cost and most importantly control the unpredictable risk in the agriculture so there are many types which can be used in the agriculture so one such type i am mentioning is demeter so this demeter is a robot which can cut the crops uh, it doesn't require any supervision so it has its cameras it can detect which crop to be cut and which crop not to be cut so the other thing is fruit picking this fruit picking is like it just pluck the fruit like even it uh, even it is implemented like which fruit is to be plucked and which fruit is not to be plucked so it will pluck the fruit put it in the basket human time is saved no need of human power there is no extra workload for the human so everything is made easier with the use of this robot i have mentioned only one but there are several types of robots which can be used we have to do things in a smart way where we don't uh, where we don't uh, lose our time like doing it in a less time in a smart way things get more better so these are the five startup companies of robotics so this data is extracted from october 2019 these are the top five robotics startups so we have to do the things in a smart way like smart farming we can do it in that way so this robotics is the fastest growing engineering field so they design to remove the human factor from dangerous work where people risk their lives in the, in those ways these robots can be installed over there so these robots do the things faster than the humans in a less time so extra workload on the farmer is decreased and even their health problems are reduced thank you Hi and welcome. Today we are going to learn about robotics for cancer treatment. Fight, believe and hope. Introduction. A robot is a machine where a complex series of actions are carried out automatically which is programmed by a computer. Robots are constructed by the line of human forms. Robots are designed to perform a task with no regards to their aesthetics. through non humanoid in form mechanics with flexible behavior and human like physical attributes have been developed because the robots given the stinginess and the repetitive me uh, mechanical form of human the history of robotics um, george devol invented the first programmable inst uh, institutional uh, robot in 1921 the word robot was introduced in karel Now we are going to learn about cancer. The introduction. Cancer refers to any of a large number of diseases characterized by development of abnormal cells that divide 
uncontrollably and have the ability to inflate and destroy normal body tissue. Cancer is the second leading cause of death in the world. Survival rates are improved for many types of cancer thanks to the improvement in cancer screening, treatment and prevention. Cancer is caused by changes or mutation to the DNA within cells. The diagnosis can be done by physical exams, laboratory tests, imaging tests and biopsies. Importance of robotics in cancer treatment the early detection skin cancer detection is done through the form of photographic moles and skin lesions lung cancer is um, by detecting nod uh, nodules rapid diagnosis the rapid test detects breast prostate bowel and lympho uh, lymphoma cancers but the researchers believe it can also detect other type of cancers digital pathology it utilizes virtual micro uh, mi Microscopy, the glass slides are converted into digital slides that can be viewed, managed, shared, and analyzed. Treatment, the robotic arms are developed with a unique wristed architecture that provides 550 degrees of manipulation, a range of motion, performs with dexterity, very deliberate motion, control of the instrument to perceive precise, uh, precise surgical tasks. By the utilization, uh, utilization of robots in cancer treatment, tremor ovulation, motion scalar high quality 3D version for surgeons, decreased blood loss, significant re uh, reduction in uh, negative use, reduce hospital stay for patients. These are the ways you can see how a robot performs in the cancer surgeries. Here is slide one. Type 2, Type 3, and Type 4. The rearranging of robotics to, uh, uh, to improve the detection of uh, cervical cancer. Cervical cancer screening methods. There are three types of testing of cervical cancer. The visual appearance, Photographs uh, were taken after each study of patient's cervix have been rinsed with vinegar. The vinegar highlights changes to the normal tissue caused by precancer or cancer by turning the tissue white. The sensitivity is, um, is the identification of true positives, that is 69% through visual appearance. By pap smear, the cervical smell uh, cells are collected, affixed to a slide and analyzed by a pathologist for the presence of precancerous and cancerous cells. The sensitivity, the identification of true positives is 71%. Automated visual evaluation, the deep learning robots approach used to evaluate digitalized images of the cervix in an automated process that predicts the probability that is represented case of precancer or cancer. The sensitivity, that is identification of true cancers is 91%. The chronic ca characterization of tumors. Robots can identify specific gene mutation from tumor patho uh, pathology images instead of using traditional genomic sequencing. Example, analyzation of pathology images of lung tumor obtained from the cancer genome atlas. Not only uh, could the DL method uh, accurately diagnose between two of the most common lung cancer subtype, uh, subtypes, uh, it could predict commonly mutated genes from the images. In the context of brain tumors, identifying mutations using non-invasive techniques is a particularly challenging problem. A DL method is identifying um, IDH mutation non-invasively from MRI images of uh, glycomas, which was found by the researchers, these research findings suggest that in the future, AI helps identify gene mutations in innovative ways. Improving of cancer cell violence. Robots were developed to extract tumor features automatically from pathology reports, saving thousands of hours of manual process time. The goal of the project is to transfer cancer care. This will help us better understand how new diagnostics uh, treatments and the other factors affect patients' outcomes. Real-time data analysis will also allow for newly diagnosing individuals to be linked with the clinical trials that may be benefit them.
Robots enable patterns recognition in popular data that was impossible before. Robotics aid in uh, predicting treatments respond, uh, response, livelihood of recurrence, local or metastatic and um, survival. Lo uh, localization and mapping. First, first, you can see the augmented reality. Second is the visual audimentary and camera localization. Third is the stimul uh, SLAM, which is known as simultaneous localization mapping. Uh, the uh, instrument tracking and the segmentation for the uh, perception. Second is the th uh, 3D tissue tracing and recognition. Third is the surgical tools and the environmental interactions. Humans and robots interaction. First, cooperative control, touchless ma uh, manipulation, intention, understanding and prediction. System modeling and scrolling, kinematic and uh, dynamic modeling. Second, to learn from the demonstration and reinforcement, reinforcement learning. Robot technology is used in different areas of healthcare and applica applications in surgery have emerged affecting the cancer treatment domain. Com Computerized and robotic devices can offer enhanced dexterity by uh, tumor abortion, motion scanning, high quality 3D versions of surgeons, and decreased uh, blood loss, significant reduction in narrative use, and reduced hospital stay for patients. But there are still areas to be improved, such as uh, reducing the time to connect all the system cables, exchanging the robotic and the camera arms with each other, reducing the size of the arms and expanding their range, strengthening the feedback mechanism during search need and reducing materials and maintenance costs. In the very near future, thanks to the rapid and continuous development of robotic technology, almost all kinds of endoscopic surgery uh, will become performed by robotic surgery and not only for the immune disease but also for the malignant illness. Thank you. Hi, I'm Prerna from Stanley College of Engineering and Technology for Women. I'm currently pursuing Bachelor's of Technology in Computer Science Engineering. So I present before you a rough project, a raw diagram on a robot, which is going to uh, be different, not slightly different, majorly different, because this is a multifunctional robot. We are going to add an EQ radio, sensory and automation and a human eye robot and BAM you have your multifunctional robot. But we are going to also test its validation. We are going to look at its modeling and we are going to look at its result for a better basis. Next I'll tell you why exactly was the idea of multifunctional robot. So the following shows you the senses of uh, the amount of people, the population who need uh, medical care, who need attention and are not exactly receiving it at a satisfactory rate. So what exactly is a robot? For those of you who don't know what a robot is, it is a machine like a phone or a washing machine or a laptop. But this one is going to be able to replicate a human being and it is going to function automatically. So once give a command, the program is installed and it's going to follow your command just like that. And considering the specific period right now, the COVID-19 pandemic, it is very disturbing and we do not want to come in contact with the person. This is where the robots come into picture. There will also be a self sanitization property which will be installed inside the robot and we won't have a we won't have to hold uh, any kind of fear that we might be prone to viruses or anything. So actually, uh, to be honest, there are other kinds of infections and diseases which are not as famous as COVID-19, but have a large impact, but usually are not noticed. So even those will be overcome by this kind of robot. What is the background of a robot? So first, uh, this slide will show you the improvisation of robots from 1980s to today. 
and the latest one is the sensory and the humanoid robot which have essentially been put in the sensory has been put into practice the humanoid is still ongoing and uh, hopefully it, by the next decade all of these will come into picture so first before building a robot everybody in robotics knows this there are three major laws when it comes to robotics and automation the first one the robot may not injure any human through any inaction it should not hurt any person and the second law states that the robot must be uh, must be obeying the command which is given except for the one which has the conflicts with the first line it means if i give a command to the robot to hurt this particular person it should not do it so basically these should be the taboo which should be kept for the robot now the robot must protect its own existence as long as it doesn't crash with the first and second what does this mean it means that if i give a command for the robot to uh, hurt this person or do something wrong very inhuman if it does obey the command because of a glitch in the system the immediate next second it should self destruct in the worst case scenario or it should switch down its entire system so this are uh, this these are basically the three laws on robotics so the related work what uh, is a related work here the it's this one is displaying the multifunctional robots individual works so this multifunctional robot is not going to be a new technology with new machines fixed in it this robot is going to bring together the already existing technology modified by 2 or 3% and make it into a perfect robot now coming to the data collection the data collection here shows you why we are making this because there is a large population in india which actually needs the medical attention and we don't really have the it at a satisfactory rate so we are going to mainly focus on increasing this mental health care which is not only we uh, going to be confined to the elderly population or the physically or mentally disabled but it is also going to help the adolescents the main teenagers the phases they go through so consider the pandemic again as we are isolating ourselves we have a lot of time to give uh, give to ourselves we keep thinking we try to uh, progress every day but progressing on our own also has its thugs so we are going to take a non human into this picture because let me be honest over here humans talking to humans what is the worst fear we might we have the fear of being judged we have the fear of thinking that whatever you might say might have become offensive to the opposite person but when it comes to a non human you don't have to worry about it anymore and you are open to a large number of opportunities to discover yourself think through the process and act accordingly so the modeling of the structure as i told before this is a combination of four sets of already existing technology the eq radio the automation uh, robot the autonomous one the humanoid robot and the sensory robot so you might be aware of the sensory robot right now because we are looking at a lot of automatic cars we are coming into picture and they are been put into use and it's a really great technology and a great improvisement which have been in the past 3 years because 3 years ago it was that this was introduced in certain parts of the world not yet in india and uh, this year in uh, 2021 they finalized the growth of this sensory uh, motor cars and it has been a great deal and a great accomplishment now here uh, a rough idea on the eq radio autonomous and uh, humanoid you might know what's a humanoid robot because it's similar to the word it's human it will express feelings like a human because there are a lot of psychology books we have like the happiness uh, hap- hypothesis by jonathan hyder and we have civilization as discontentedness by sigmund freud and they are installed on the responses which will not be completely based on the book so this is why a humanoid robot will be used it will express certain feelings like a human for example i might be a robot i might not understand your feelings but the least i can do is to be here for you 
listen to you without judgment and may be able to give you the right solution what does this mean there are a lot of people who need mental caressing a little bit of uh you know a little bit of care and they'll be back on track a little more active progressive and happier and that's the main aim right everyone wants to be happy in their life why not so why not yeah let's go with the eq radio what exactly is the eq radio going to do over here so eq radio will be let's take me for an example i have a place sensor and a robot a eq radio is before me this sensor will send some wireless signals which will measure my heartbeat and my respiration rate so why both because the movement of the chest when the heartbeat takes place is far less than the movement of the chest when we breathe and this deepens this gives you a deep thought on what the emotion of the person is so why are we using a eq robot over here this eq radio has given about 87% of accurate results on the more main emotions and this is why we are going to consider this robot to detect the person's emotions why a robot can't a human tell if the person is angry or uh, sad or happy why a eq radio the precise results are given with the heart rate and the respiration why i can keep a poker face right now and yet be happy but my inner feeling will be something else i might be sad i might be angry and that will internally harm me which means i am not making progress in mental health care and that is where these robots are coming into picture the sensory robots why exactly are sensory robots right now i as i told you our main focus is on the elderly the physically and mentally disabled if these kind of population and those who can't be independent because of the disabilities they have they usually need someone or someone to uh, something to assist them so robots a sensory robot will detect its surrounding have a picture of its environment notice the obstacles and follow the path through so this is where the sensory robot will help them autonomous system is for everything the controlment of the entire robot multifunctional system and the humanoid robot as i told you it will add some feelings into the robot which will make it a little with a little touch of human now let's see more of the modeling so eq block diagram what exactly does it does as i told you there will be a sensor a wireless signal the heartbeat and the respiration signal will be detected and it will test the four main emotions joy joy pleasure sadness anger so this will be based on the feature selection when it comes to the respiratory features and the ibi features which are taken from the heartbeat segmentation and respiration signals next we have a rough diagram on a humanoid robot which is already created so this is how the humanoid robot looks like let's look at the sensory robots block diagram as i told you it will take a picture of its environment detect the obstacles how will it detect the obstacles exactly there will be a light thrown into the surroundings like it will have the sensors on both the sides or let's say it will have a 360 degree view the light is passed on the object it will reflect back it will use sensors to detect what sensor does it use it's a lidar sensor so these lidar sensors they detect the obstacles and clear the path next so it's going to look something like this and sensory robot are already existing so since we are creating a multifunctional robot we want all the systems to be in one so the entire robot is going to look something like this with all the automations now we spoke about the modeling the data collection what exactly made me think of this kind of robot so what is the validation so far so so far on the discovery of a multifunctional robot it was said that a four standard robot control with a connect to the servo amplifiers to a single processor board with one of the controllers has been succeeded it means the other for example the eq radio is functioning right now and there are three other robots which are at a pause so to uh, decrease the amount of fuel usage we can shut down the three automatically based on the program given to them or they can be used as a spare part for the one which is actually functioning so 
single uh yeah this is what uh this multiple robot system will do now what exactly does this robot system does i've been talking about programming i've been talking about leaving a command and it will do a task but what exactly does it do so a knowledgeable robotic system integrator is a thing which will evaluate an application it will help in determining the number the type the configuration of robots and it will control and it will need the meet of a specific application it is important to choose a robot vendor with experience because there are a lot of fraud, fraud marketing is going on and obviously necessary features like we need to maximize the investment for the marketing and we need to include training for the robot deployment and everything for the robot to work and for the robot to be created we need a lot of uh resources which are already present and it can be done not in one year but it might take decades but it will be done now what are the results of all this overall we know that as i've told you our main aim was to increase the uh, rate in uh, poor mental health days and so there will be a sorry decrease in poor mental health days and so there will be a drastic decrease in the poor health days it will reduce the number of accidents among this group of people which i mentioned which will likely increase from 12 to 22% that is the safety is almost double now this will have a satisfaction of not having an impairment i might have missed a point earlier while making the robot we are also giving a system the automations to a lightweight hand lightweight leg which will give them a satisfaction of not having impairment in the body now as you can see all the results on the screen right now let me focus on the main point over here this is going to create jobs it is going you might think that what about the people who actually perform these tasks individually like nurses or uh, anyone who is at your help this will be compensated by the people who also lost their jobs in many sectors of it not only the engineering fields the software fields but it will also help in the Uh, it will also help the people who are specializing in the neurological fields it will create jobs in all these fields because let's state facts neurology is not an easy subject the movements of our hands the coordination everything depends on the nervous system so basically there's about a 3000 book manual it just for one single hand nervous system man, uh, you know the control and the coordination so all this is not easy when we have to build a robot it's not just about the architecture but also about the programs we give the building structure the blocks everything the foundation and everything so not only it not only medical but also architect students who are at a risk of losing their job or who have good knowledge but are not exactly putting it into practice once developed in this field once put into this field will obviously make this a blast so this is the end